Hi, it's Julia. Today I am working on my fabric flower pins. I actually have a special order on one from on my Etsy shop, so I'll be making that one. Uh, I use sweatshirt um, bands and pieces that I cut off my sweatshirts. I do a lot of altering on sweatshirts, so I cut the bands and the cuffs and the, and the neck bands off and turn them and do all sorts of different things. I sell them on Etsy shop and also in craft shows. So, and you know, any of you who do craft shows out there, you know how you have to stretch the buck. And every time I sell one of these pins, it helps offset the price of my sweatshirt so I can actually keep my sweatshirts at a lower price. So that's kind of the, my, my, me my method behind my madness. I have a ton of sweatshirt bands and I just keep them in a big basket and do all sorts of different accessories with them. Uh, but let's get going on the on the flowers. This is the style that I will be doing today. And I use three different dies for my Big Shot, Sizzix Big Shot. I use the flower die, it's called Flower Layers. And it actually has, I don't know if you can see, it's so hard to see these, but there's there's four different layers on this one. I also use the one fourth inch circle and I will be using the plain leaves also this plain leaves has let's see one two three four different sizes and I will be using the second to the largest size on the, on the plain leaves and the colors that my customer wants, the base or the largest layer will be the navy, and then the bay blue will be the layer on top, and then a circle would be, will be the mustard color, and the leaf is kind of this khaki khaki green color. And so I will get, be getting set up at my Sizzix Big Shot, and we'll be showing you that that next step. Okay, I have my, my um, Sizzix Big Shot. This is an awesome machine for cutting fabric and you can cut multiple layers of fabric, usually up to at least four layers depending on the thickness of your fabric. But this first step on this, or the first layer, the large layer on this flower, I do two, two of, of that color and the leaf is actually sandwiched in between it. And so I'm gonna be laying that right over the top of that larger leaf or excuse me larger flower layer and notice this seam you certainly can see that seam this was actually a cuff off my sweatshirt it this is kind of an organic look and you know it's just the way it is it's I, I, I appreciate that look they think they look really handcrafted and really fun so that's the first layer the second layer is this bay blue and that's on the second to the largest um, layer so that's I'm going to just stick that on there right beside it and then you make your sandwich with your cutting sheets one on the top and one on the bottom and I'm going to run it through the machine I've actually had this machine for the last for six years and I use it every single day I do a lot of sewing and a lot of special orders and a lot of stuff so and it has just been it's been the best Okay, so that's the middle layer, and here's the, the bottom layer. I'm just going to kind of keep that together. And the next one I'm going to cut out is the circle with the um, mustard color. I'm going to cut two of these. I only need one, but I, I'm always using them, so I'm going to just cut two of them while I might as well cut two. I'm going to run that one through. And the last one that I'm going to run through is the leaf. And I do cut two of those. And the reason why I cut two of those is they're just for a little bit more stability. Um, just so, it has, so it has a little bit more structure to it. And I cut this piece of fabric a little bit short. But a lot of this leaf, it gets sandwiched in between. So I just want to make sure I have the point 
on there and then it'll be fine. And my last sandwich to run through my machine. And there I go. My next step is to layer my my um, my little flower and this little leaf is going to go in between these two layers and then I'm going to stick a pin of course I don't have my pins here but I'm going to stick a pin in there this whole thing will go over to oh, I don't need two layers of this this whole thing will now go over to my sewing machine and I will show you what I do I, I just use a free motion uh, mach machine stitch on this and I will use a clear thread on the top. Um, it's just so it just kind of hides hides mistakes and or whatever a little bit better. And so that's going to be the next step. And I'm going to set up at my sewing machine, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm at my sewing machine. I have my invisible thread on, so I guess you're not going to be able to see the stitches very well. I wasn't really thinking about that. Um, but I'll link this this thread down below. It's awesome thread. It's called the Wonder Invisible Thread. I use it a lot. It does not it does not itch or scratch or anything like you would think an, an invisible thread would. It is nylon. Um, not super, super strong. I wouldn't use it for sewing like a stress seam or anything, but any any kind of work like this where you don't want the stitching to, to show, it works really well. I think it's lingerie thread possibly for lingerie um, like elastic so you know that it's real comfortable. So anyway that's that and I do have my um, my embroidery foot on, I have my feed, drop, feed dogs dropped and I'm just going to be doing the moving on this and here goes. I'm going to start with the leaf here. It's done. I just have some threads to clip here. Um, my next step is I put a little pin back on the back and I will show you how I do that. I wanted to show you a close-up of this and so you can kind of see the stitches a little bit better. I kind of did a spiral in the center and then yeah it's kind of cute. Probably won't see much of the spiral. There, there is a button and that goes in the center. But yeah so the back side, I do flip it over and I do stick a pin on it. A little bit about the bar pins that I use. This is an inch and a half pin and I use a good quality. I don't like when they snag um, any type of fabric or, or, you know, I don't know what people are going to put use it for. It would be, you know, the cheaper pins, pin backs are fine for probably hats or maybe like tote bags. But if anybody wants to put this on a lapel or a scarf or anything, I would just... So anyway, I do use the, the more expensive bar pin, uh, pins. And I get, I'll, I'll link where I get these. Um, they just open really nice and they're really smooth. Um, this is such a simple little method that I use, do for this. Let me see here if I can maybe zoom in just a little bit more. This is where an extra one of these little things come in handy also. I kind of want to put the pin back, not smack in the middle, but a little bit towards the top. It just hangs better when it's on there. And I'm just going to run a bead of hot glue, stick my pin on there really good. And then to cover it up, I'm going to stick this piece of fabric down. So it's all finished off on the back. And that's as simple as that. And you have a sweet little pin just made from odds and ends of, of fabric or scraps. 
And then, of course, I'm going to want to dig in my stash of buttons for a button that, and the, actually the one that she picked out was kind of a blue button. So, yeah, this is a mess. I have, you cannot even believe how many buttons I have. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick out a button, I'm going to sew it on, and I'll show you the end, the end result.